Hi, I'm Karen and I work with ProServe IT. Thank you for joining today's session. So over the next 20 minutes, I'm going to share my learnings of working with Microsoft Teams. I'm going to show you how uh, we've been able to use it to cut down on emails, to centralize our to do's and just make it easier to collaborate um, with my own team. But what's, what's been really cool is how we've been able to collaborate really well and with ease with partners and customers that are outside our organization. So we'll go into a little bit of that as well. So Teams does have a lot to offer, um, but I think what I found is what was really important was to try and figure out how to incorporate it into my day to day and make it so that it wasn't a lot of like popping in and out and 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 um, kind of ardu an arduous task. So I experimented a lot um, and in the end um, it really was about trying to keep it simple and doing a lot of experimenting. Um, so today we find that um, we've had some great adoption and I also find that I'm using it. I'm a notorious uh, note taker with my book, but I am using the tool to kind of keep myself organized and I'll share some of that as well. So I hope with what I'm going to share with you today uh, will help you get started as well. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, let me just see here. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so what we're going to cover today are uh, three specific topics. So we're going to go through uh, task by planner and to do, and this is an app that's available in Teams. So we'll walk through on how to download that and, and incorporate it into your team. Then I'm going to show you how to add a private channel within a team. This is what, what allows you to have discussions and collaborations with specific members of your team. So you're able to um, go from the broader team and maybe come down to maybe two or three folks that you want to be working on, but still within the context of that team. And then finally, how I organize my world without leaving teams. Um, I've used a personal team channel and ta a personal team channel and also the app task by planner and to do. OK, so now let's jump right into the demo. I'm going to open that up now. OK, so we are um, first. I'm going to start with uh, creating a team. So we're going to come down here. We're going to create the team. I'm going to create that here. I'm going to do it from scratch. It's private. Um, people need permission to join and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm going to give this, um, I'm going to call this volunteer, um, volunteer, oops, goodness, volunteer recruitment. I can add a description if I want, but I'm going to create it here. So what's happening now is that it's getting created within my list of teams here. And what it's going to ask me to do next is to um, add members to my team. So these members are actually coming from your own company or, or organization's directory. So I'm going to add a few folks to this team that I want to collaborate with. And I'm going to add them to the team. Now, what we did talk about was that uh, we're able to kind of collaborate with folks or organizations and partners outside of our our company or our yeah our company. So what I'm going to show you here is when you start typing a name or group, if you want to invite someone that's outside your organization, then all you need to do is they need to have a valid email address. What you'll do is you'll enter that into the add the member and it'll show up as guest. So you'll always be able to distinguish who has been part of your organization and who is an, a guest within your uh, within your team. So I'm going to close this now. So we've just added three members to our team. I'm going to move this up so it's easier to access. And what you're going to see here, here's the members. So we have uh, the members and myself that are part of this team. So now I'm going to jump right into uh, adding the task by planner and to do. So really what you need to do is go to this plus sign and this is going to pull up all of the apps that are available that you can work with within Teams. We use uh, in this situation, we're going to use task by planner and to do. If you can't find it easily, all you need to do is kind of type it into the task bar. And it, what it's doing right now is it's pulling up that app and it's going to add it to the top banner of the um, of your of your of your plan or your team. So you can create a new plan uh, by default. It calls it tasks. You can rename it here to something that is more intuitive to yourself or you can just leave it. So I'm going to leave it for now and I'm going to hit save. So what it's doing now is it's actually creating this task or this this plan into your team. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So I'm going to decide it. What I want to do now is I do want to rename it. So I'm going to call this um, here. This is going to be the improvement plan as an example. OK, so now that'll be replaced up there. So how this is organized, this is a board um, and how this is organized is really think about it as lists and tasks. Each one of these columns or buckets are lists that you can create and within those lists you create tasks and within those tasks you're able to have um, a checklist. So let's get started. You can start by adding so the buckets here could be things like um, training. Oops, training. You can have another one you can call here it can be uh, recruitment. As an example, so I've got three lists here that I can start populating with tasks. I'm just going to come back under the to do, which you can also rename if you want, but I'm going to come back under the to do and I'm going to create a couple of tasks. You just have to click task. I'm going to call this one um, volunteer. Oops, volunteer agreement. Add it. The next one I'm going to call announcements. And I'm going to add that as well. Now what you can so that now these are sitting here underneath your tasks. Now what we do is we go into each one of these and this is where we start pr providing a little bit more detail. We're going to open up this card and what this allows you to do is to put in information here that's going to allow you to manage that task. Um, and it's also you'll see all these different fields are of value because later if you want, you're going to be able to filter them. So a filter is available for every single uh, item that's listed on that card. So you have the opportunity to, to really have some different slices or views of that task. So here you're going to assign. I'm going to assign that task to Adele. Now Adele is receiving an email that lets her know that I've assigned this task to her and there's a link in the email that will take her directly to this team and this task. Um, by the way, as well, when we created this team, the folks that we added to this team have also been notified that they've been added to this team. I'm going to leave the bucket. It's under this to do list. I could add it to any of these other list items if I wanted. And what you're going to see here is that we're able to manage the progress of this task. If it's in progress, you're going to see on this card that it shows it as in progress. Uh, there's also completed to give it a note when we're done that it's completed. You can indicate a priority. It can be urgent. Again, you're going to see that on the card or important. And I'll leave this one as important and you'll see that it puts that uh, exclamation. You can put a start date. So we started this on Monday and maybe it's due on Friday. What you'll notice here is that the due date is now going to be show up on this card. You can put in notes. Here's where we can add a checklist. So you can leave it at the card level or the task level, but here you're able to get a little bit more granular. So we're in announcements, so I want to be able to, you know, make a team announcement. We're going to do it at our town hall and we're going to do it on our, our workplace. So what you can see here is that we have uh, three tasks. Um, and they're showing up as three tasks. Zero are completed. You'll also notice that it's showing up on this card as well. Um, the number of tasks as we complete them. You'll see there's a progression here that shows up one to three, two to three. Same thing is showing up on this card. The other thing that you can you have the option to do is show these tasks on the card as well. Again, it's up to you. Play with it. What works with you uh, with the amount of information that you want to see when you come into this plan is what you what you have the flexibility to do. So we're going to we'll leave that on the card for now. Volunteer agreement. Again, we're going to add we're going to add a couple of folks here um, that are going to work on this one. This one's in progress. Um, this one here, we started on the 20th and it was due on the 25th. What you're going to notice here is that because this date is past due, that it's showing up as red and it also gives you an indication that it's past due. And again, notes, items here, um, again, can be, we just need to have a, again, we're going to work on the template. Maybe we need to get finance involved. And those will show up as well. OK, so now we have these two flexibility. You can move these around. And you can create copies again. So if you just want to copy a task, uh, you can put under which list you want it to go to. Um, I'm going to select uh, recruitment. I'm going to copy it. It shows up there. Um, and if I want, I can delete it. So again, lots and lots of flexibility um, with this one. 
So we're going to move from this one here and I'm going to jump into a team that I've already created. So we've talked about this plan we, we added, which was the uh, task uh, task by planner and to do. So I'm going to go into a, a team that I've already created called onboarding volunteers. And this one here, I have a onboarding volunteers plan. And what you'll notice is that it's in progress. We have a number of different lists. I've decided to create a master template list and then I'm creating for each employee or volunteer that joins me. I'm going to be creating and adding their cards to their list. As you can see here, you can tell quickly just how many tasks are done, how many are past due. Easy view, you can use the filter. I'm going to filter this by the bucket. I'm going to filter this by Collins so that I only see Collins. Uh, the other cool thing I'll just show here quickly is that you have a chart. Again, you can take a look at the view of the progress of your initiative or project. You can tell uh, at a glance how many not started in progress, late completed, etc. So that's just a different view that you can have. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you here is that you have um, the opportunity to, let's go here, files, is that uh, in collaborating with this team, we want to keep all of our information together. So we're keeping all of our files in this one spot. We're able to upload, create folders, uh, create documents, add documents to this tab, et cetera. So again, one-stop shop for this, uh, for this project. The other thing is posts. You can communicate. Um, this is really cut down on emails. You communicate with your team. You keep all of the communication here. Everyone is notified of it, and you also can go here easily to find within context all of the communication related to this project. It's really quite simple. You're going to, and this notifies. You pick whomever you want to um, call. Oops, call you later. Um, and that will notify Pradeep that I've sent him a note. He'll come here. He'll get an, a, note, uh, a notification here that there's a message for them. I can even communicate with the entire team. The other quick thing I want to show here is that you can do get email address. So if you want to keep emails that are related to uh, uh, the context of this project uh, that you're sending through your Outlook, then you can just copy this email, CC it, and now that email will show up here as well. So it's a great way to be able to track and keep all of the communication in one spot. So that's a little bit more about the team and managing the project and how we're kind of keeping it all in one spot. The next thing I want to get to is the private channel. So you'll notice within fundraising activities, I've added a channel and it's we've marked it and labeled it as private. What you'll notice here uh, and what we talked about earlier is that there's these are the number of folks that are members of this general team. Within the private channel, oops, sorry, within the private channel, we have only two. So anything that's that's a conversation or documentation that we want kept private or only collaborating with a subset, you have an opportunity to have uh, create this within your team. So I'm just going to go back quickly to onboarding volunteers and show you how we created that. It's quite simple. You're going to come here. You're going to add a channel. We're going to call it, uh, we use as a best practice, we call it private just so that it stands out a little bit better. And we're going to, we're going to call this um, agreements. And we can put a description if we want. And then here, we're, what's really important is that we're calling it private and we're going to add this to our channel. Now we want to, again, from our directory, this is really the folks that are in this team are only going to come up now, and I'm going to only invite um, two folks to this one, and we're going to add them. So now, the, now I've created a private channel within this team, and I've identified who has access to any of the information or the conversations that happen here. So that's how you create a private channel within the team. OK, now what I would like to go to, uh, we've showed you all of that. So then finally, what I want to be able to share with you is how I keep uh, or how I uh, keep track and keep uh, keep on top of, of my information or the things that I'm working with. I created a channel called Karen. Um, and in Karen, this is again, it's going to be really simple. Um, I keep 
my folders, my files, things that I'm working on personally, say for my team, uh, that traditionally would have been in email, it would have been on my laptop, stored on my desktop, it would have been, um, you know, short, shared in other sort of shared document spaces. But now I have a copy here that keeps everything in one spot for me, easy access. Same thing with emails. Um, I showed you earlier how you can get an email address for that post or that channel. So we're able to here, um, I'm able to then take this email address, take an email that's come through my Outlook forwarded here, tag and, and then be able to kind of keep, again, anything that I want to keep track of in this one spot. So that's been really, really helpful. The next thing I want to show you is something that's really been quite, uh, quite helpful. And if you come over to this navigation bar, we talked a little bit earlier about having the task by planner and to do within the context of a project or within a team. Here, you're able to actually click on this tasks and planner here, or you can search for it. Tasks by planner and to do. And now it's going to show up um, on your navigation bar. I'm going to pin it here so it, it actually it stays there. I'm going to come up here. So what this does, it consolidates all of your to do's and tasks and your planner tasks in one place for easy reference. So I keep this pinned here. This is my go to. So anything that I've been assigned of any of the other teams or projects that I've got assigned tasks to or even tasks that I've added to my personal task list, which I'll get to in a minute, will all show up here. Again, you have the same sort of view that you had in the card where you know the number of uh, items that are completed. You're able to assign a priority, give it a due date, etc. So this has been really wonderful. Um, the other piece I'm just going to jump to here is tasks. Uh, this has actually replaced my notebook. I can open this up quickly, and if I want to add a task, uh, follow up with stuff. I can add the task. I can give it a priority. It's important. I can give it a due date, and I can save it. I can also go in here, and like the other cards that we saw, I can add items to it. So this has been wonderful. Um, the so it's just really again a one stop shop. One other quick little thing is you can actually quick create your own list or plan. I've got one here that you can call personal. I'm keeping track of, you know, my own personal tasks, contact financial, sign up for a course, those sorts of things. So that's that's been and you can also sort by having, you know, all of your important tasks come up. So this has been really good. Uh, one quick uh, thing that I just learned um, just probably a couple of weeks ago is that when you hit this task by planner, what's available, it's not showing in this demo, but there's actually something called pop out app. This has been wonderful because what that allows me to do is to actually pop out this view as a screen and minimize it. So now that if I want to add or check on tasks or update a task or add a task, I just need to open it up, um, fit, go to the screen and, and pop in what I want to be able to add minimize it and I'm not going in and out of teams throughout the day. OK, that takes me to the end of my session. I'm just going to come back here just based on what we covered today. Um, we did talk about task by planner and to do and kind of a dual purpose there, one within a project where you can create lists and tasks to manage adding a private channel uh, with restricted permissions for those conversations or those other collaborations that you want to have within that team, but with a select group or members or specific members of your team. And then finally, how I keep myself organized using a personal team channel and also tasks by planner and to do, which um, consolidates all of the to, to do's and planner tasks in one place for um, easy reference. So I'm going to stop sharing now and really that's the end of my session. I want to thank you very much for your time. I hope there's something you can take away from what I've shared with you today. If there's any questions, we'll be happy to get back to you.